Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's and Mariana's Coffee. Tonight on the Channel 2 News. The governor says ARPA funds are all gone and some cuts are coming. Also tonight, a lawmaker says United Special Resident Fairs don't work on the app and don't work for a tourism-based economy. And our local Coast Guard detachment gets an increase in responsibilities. In Los Deportes, where better to have a King of the Beach tournament than Crown Plaza? Stay with us. These stories and more are next. goes with your flow. Get unlimited local talk, text, and data at the most affordable rate with unlimited flow postpaid. I love Marianne's coffee. Come join me for a cup. I think you would be really happy. Our new McDonald's Spicy Chicken McNuggets are just the right amount of spicy. A small to medium Sprite kind of spicy. Uh, let's get a McFlurry after this kind of spicy. But if you get the mighty hot sauce, it's a napkins up for foreheads now kind of spicy. Uh, this came from McDonald's kind of spicy? Because our spicy chicken McNuggets breaded in tempura and made with cayenne are just the right amount of spicy. Unless you remember what I said about the sauce. ba da ba ba, -ba. <laughs> Personnel is the largest cost category in the CNMI's fiscal year budget. It's 60% of the CNMI's expenditures. The administration submitted its budget proposal to the legislature earlier this month, projecting $111.4 million for government operations. The budget includes a cut in work hours down to 70, and the governor says there may be more. We may get to a situation where we have to cut our workforce further. Uh, now we can go to the options are actually go down to 64. I mean, this government has, has done that before. Uh, or <clears throat> uh, stay at 70, but uh, really uh, cut the, the number of employees in the government through attrition or just make a, uh, a direct cut. Finance Secretary Tracy Narita adds that the invested 200 million ARPA money has been depleted. And I'd like to put this issue to a close that the 200 million was indeed invested in 2021. However, the entire amount was withdrawn and depleted in 2022. This was a finding of the fiscal response um, committee uh, back in 2023, it is old news. However, we'd like to close this issue since that it has resurfaced again. And so again, the 200 million has been fully depleted and withdrawn in 2022. Narita says the administration continues to manage what ARPA funds they were able to recover, but it is being used for critical obligations. We've also identified uh, costs that we must take care of, such as utilities, fuel, communications, those are our critical expenditures. And so we are focusing on recovering 1% of the ARPA remaining funds. 
and recovery of those funds. Recovery looks like uh, going after any uh, contracts that may be canceled and recover uh, any programs that were outstanding to be closed, recover those funds. And as we recover those funds, we pay outstanding balances, we pay outstanding contracts. And so that has been um, the activity on the ARPA funds. The CNMI is expected to receive a $15 million reimbursement from FEMA, but Narita says it will be used for more obligations. The largest obligation that we have for ARPA funds is the GHLI health insurance contract that we have with Aetna. So although we are expecting a $15 million reimbursement from FEMA, those funds are already obligated towards things such as our health insurance plan, which costs $13 million for this year alone, plus arrears that were not paid in the past. So again, although we anticipate recovering funds, these funds are already fully obligated. Palasha says even though cuts and furloughs are the options on the table right now, he is hopeful that things will turn around. Very, very hopeful. We're very, very uh optimistic that with all the CIP projects online and getting online, uh, the college is going to be online, um, uh, another uh, two other buildings are ready to go, um, Bits Road is going to be completed, uh, that's a $39 million uh, infrastructure project and then CDBGDR, uh, NMAC, um, uh, there's multiple projects that are ongoing right now that are going to uh, generate funds uh, this year and into next year. And with the resumption of Ashana Airlines for weekly flights and Japan's easing of entry and departure requirements of their country, the administration considers these as a promising sign for continued recovery of tourism. We're also seeing a very... Uh, promising increase in our tourism numbers and we we are going to do everything we can to make sure that that uh, MVA continues to engage appropriately not just with the Korean market but also with the Japan market to aggressively take a look at that market and see what can be done. The governor says this is just a proposed budget which could be revised in the summer. As things improve, you know, we, we, we take a look at the priorities again and uh, go from there. A change.org petition has so far gathered over 2,000 signatures and a call for United to reconsider airfare pricing on the Guam-Saipan route. United currently offering economy fares at $580 for the 25-minute, 120-mile flight. Legislator Ed Probst. Uh, this is a regional issue, and we have uh, been fortunate to have met with the governor, lieutenant governor of Guam, uh, the legislature, with the speaker of the legislature of Guam, and, uh, and we all had uh, uh, the same conclusions and uh, consensus on that uh, these rates are just outrageous and too expensive. Last week, the CNMI House and Senate received a letter from United's Dan Weiss, more probed. The uh, letter never really addressed the real issue, which was uh, the exorbitant rates, $580. Instead, it was just to say, hey, there's other rates that you can, that the residents of the CNMI in Guam can take advantage of. Uh, you forgot about these. Weiss pointed out that CNMI residents can access lower resident-only fares on United's app, but as we tried to do, on Friday, on a few different devices, we were unable to do so. Legislator says neither was he. We felt that he missed, kind of missed the boat on this, you know. Um, he basically, Mr. Weiss, wanted to educate us on the fact that there are lower available airfares uh, for residents of Sidamai and Guam. But if you know how to navigate the website, so I don't know if you've tried to actually lower the rates, but we were unable to do it on our phone, so we had to go onto a computer and do it. But you, again, would have to know exactly what to do, change your region either to the Northern Marianas or click on it to, to show that it's Guam. But the average person wouldn't know that. I didn't know that. And
A number of credit card companies don't issue cards to NMI addresses. The workaround is to have a U.S. billing address, but that workaround doesn't work when you try to pay for a resident airfare. The computer seeing the U.S. billing address quickly changes the pricing back to the higher fares, and the lower fares come with severe restrictions. One is it's non-refundable. Uh, the next is if you were to make a change, which often happens, you want to stay an extra day or maybe something happens, you want to leave it a day earlier, uh, you have a $200 penalty. So that shoots it right back up. But the other catch here is that you're not allowed to carry any baggage. With prices so high and trips fewer and further in between, buying a ticket with no changes and no baggage permitted doesn't help much. Most people that travel between Saipan and Guam want to bring goods with them and bring goods back home. It's just very, uh, it's very common. If you travel to Guam, chances are you're going to go shopping at wherever, Ross, Kmart, wherever, and you're going to bring stuff back. United told us that rates are a function of demand and seasonality, but that doesn't appear to be the case in our region. I saw in, in KSPN story that, uh, that United Airlines had responded to uh, a constituent, a resident here, Mr. Jesse Torres, who was very upset with the, the rates, as he should be, the airfare, and they responded that it's seasonal, they gave a lot of excuses as to why it was, and the beautiful thing is uh, KSPN actually ran a story on that and showed that 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 happens in other places where it shows a graph of different, that is changing throughout the seasons, but United's graph that, uh, that was shown was constant and it didn't change, and that right there is proof that United is not doing this based on seasonality or demand of or fuel rates or anything. They haven't adjusted the $580 rate since as far as you know since COVID. And um, and this is a time where we're supposed to rebuild our tourism, rebuild our economy, but the average person can't really uh, travel between our islands because of the outrageous exorbitant uh, airfare between between our islands. What will be the fate of Imperial Pacific International? This will finally be determined at the revocation hearing set for tomorrow, Tuesday, April 9 at 10 a.m. The Commonwealth Casino Commission issued its agenda for the revocation hearing late Friday evening, just minutes after U.S. District Court Judge David Carter denied IPI's second motion for an emergency TRO. In his ruling, Judge Carter says the motion for an emergency TRO presents few new facts from those presented in the first motion. IPI argues that CCC commissioners are biased when it comes to deciding if they will revoke the casino license because they are funded by payments made from IPI. But according to Judge Carter, IPI has admitted that it has failed to pay the regulatory fee along with other fees for a few years. This, he says, indicates that the CCC is not funded solely on IPI's payment as they continue to exist to this day. The court finds these arguments lack support due to the likelihood of success on the merits of its due process course of action. IPI filed for its second emergency TRO earlier this month in some last-minute efforts to restrain commissioners from deliberating on the revocation of the exclusive casino license. But the hearing is on and the agenda includes oral testimony from the general public and deliberation and ruling on the complaints seeking revocation. Once again, the revocation hearing is set for tomorrow, Tuesday, April 9 at 10 a.m. at the Springs Plaza in Gualorai. Green sea turtles and hawksbill turtles call the Mariana Islands home. They are an important part of the marine ecosystem. They are under threat and they are protected under CNMI law. Keep plastic out of the ocean. 
keep vehicles off the beach. Use the Sea Turtle Stranding Hotline if you see poaching activities or if you see a turtle in trouble. Call 287-8537 and save a turtle. I love Marianne's coffee. Come join me for a cup. I think you would be really happy. The Department of Public Safety Highway Patrol Division launched the National 4D Campaign last year in December, which was to prevent any drunk, drugged, drowsy, or distracted driving. Tonight, they report that through their strategic plan, they were able to reach their ultimate goal, which is zero fatality during the holiday season. We collect uh, statistics during those holiday seasons, and it shows that Fatalities do increase during the holidays. It's the highest during the holidays. And for the CNMI to zero that out during the holidays, that is a major achievement. In a press conference this week, Sergeant Adrian Mendiola states that the first part of their strategic plan was public outreach. DPS partnered with local media and schools to educate the public on the dangers of driving under the influence. We kind of went hard on public outreach. We believe that going out there, educating them, giving them the fair warning was the right thing to do and um, educating them before we hit them with uh, enforcement. And the second part of the strategic plan was enforcement. We made our presence known out there on the highway that we were out there enforcing during the holiday season. As you know, uh, it's always festive during the holiday seasons and alcohol is always involved. Um, the highways become a bit more dangerous because of impaired drivers out on the highway. So. We took the, our enforcement plan and tailored it to that. We, uh, the checkpoints were not just set up anywhere that we wanted to. It was strategically set up at specific times, at specific locations that we noticed that there was a problem. Police conducted over 20 checkpoints from December 8, 2023 to January 1st of this year. 202 citations were issued and only two DUIs were over the blood alcohol content of 0.08. The CNMI population is at 49,000 and the number of registered vehicles is about half of that. We have a total amount of close to 23,000 registered vehicles, almost half the population. And we are a 14 square mile island. so. It's safe to say that we are congested and we have ongoing projects on Beach Road that kind of make it even more dangerous for operators out there. DPS Highway Patrol Commander Vicente Sablon says, with road constructions currently happening in various parts of the island, setting up checkpoints has become a challenge. But the plan is to have at least one checkpoint every month. Uh, checkpoint is geared at the statistics. Okay. Fatal areas, fatal time, fatal conditions. So, uh, checkpoints is mainly geared or to target the fatal areas, which is one more you see the Waterloo, Middle Road, uh, in front of uh, like Pizza Hut. And though the holiday season is over, DPS plans to continue this program for other upcoming holidays, such as St. Patrick's Day, July 4th, and more. DPS thanks the community for cooperating and following the rules of the road. Big pat on the back to our community out there. Thank you for working with us. A change of command ceremony was held on Friday afternoon at the American Memorial Park for a local Coast Guard detachment.
think this is the first time that a commanding officer has been he here, stationed here since World War II. Local operation will now be known as a Marine Safety Unit, giving them more autonomy and responsibility. The Coast Guard gives authority and responsibility to very, very junior people very early in their careers. So that above all, we ask them to be good neighbors. I think it's good and right that the Coast Guard has embarked upon this evolution of our junior Marine safety programs and tapped some of them for transition to command. It demonstrates continued refinement of our appreciation of how the service thinks about the importance of the different communities in our organization and the impact of, that they have in their day-to-day -day work um, coupled with the responsibilities that they bear. Gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to introduce our Marine Safety Detachment Supervisor, Lieutenant Justin Miller. Honor, respect, and devotion to duty are the core values of the U.S. Coast Guard, which during peacetime operates under the Department of Homeland Security. During times of war, it can be transferred to operate under the U.S. Navy by the President or by an act of Congress. The Guard has over 40,000 active duty personnel stationed throughout the world and maintains ocean-going cutters, patrol ships, even tugs and icebreakers, along with helicopters and fixed-wing aircraft. Justin Miller is the new local CO. It's a tremendous uh, honor, and um, it's just uh, unremarkable, the, the feeling of it. And the support you saw today is just, everyone is just uh, so for it, and uh, the partnerships are great. So we're going to be doing some really wonderful things here. What do you think is the Coast Guard's most important role here locally mm -hmm. from a local citizen standpoint? Search and rescue seems to be like the number one thing that we always hear about, but is that, right. the, is that, is that number one or what, is, what would you say is? People are always number one. Um, that's uh, it's sort of our, our given motto as far as our number one um, uh, resource in the Coast Guard is people and our mission are people. And uh, without the people, who are we? And so we, we focus heavily on, our, on the people here. And um, I would say a, a close second is that um, the island, everyone here really loves the beauty of their island. They love the beauty of the water. Um, some, you know, they are dependent on marine traffic. So it's our responsibility to make, to do our part, ensuring that marine traffic and commerce continues and so on and so forth. And, and making sure that primarily everyone is safe, operates safely. Uh, tourism's coming back full swing this year with all the cruise ships and things like that. So of course, public safety, safety on the water um, is a huge part of that. And uh, fortunately, we have wonderful um, local government agencies such as DPS Boating Safety and Customs and Biosecurity, so many people um, that we are teaming up with to achieve these missions. Fast, fun, and easy. That's how your home Wi-Fi should be. So start with an internet plan that fits your budget. Introducing your home Wi-Fi starter pack, also known as WISP. Enjoy up to 25 megabits per second for as low as $35 a month, plus a free router with your wireless subscription. That's hours of movies, games, social media, and more endless fun. Get your Wi-Fi starter pack today only at Docomo Pacific. Better together. Additional conditions may apply. Premium office space available now at the Hermosa Vista Business Park on Capitol Hill. Upgrade your work-life balance and enjoy a distinctive blend of location and nature with open spaces and ocean views. It's the perfect place for creative professionals who want real results. Call us at 670-483-4750 or email hvsaipan at gmail.com.
Point of Sports, Sports fans. fans. It was beach volleyball action over the weekend at Crown Plaza tournament on Saturday. And this tournament started with some maintenance, some heavy duty rototilling. And a lot of things were found buried deep in the sand on those volleyball courts. Players in their bare feet, you gotta watch out. Buried treasure included cans, glass, metal, even some old Pala Pala blocks and electrical wire. Take a look at all this buried treasure. No, Jimmy Hoffa not found, but cement shoes, well, not sure. Jermaine, one of the top young players, sporting some longer hair for this tourney, looking sharp. Tournament's held as a mini tryout of sorts for sending teams to the Micronesian Games in the Marshall Islands. Kathy and Alfredo teaming up here. It was a nice day at the beach and this was a king and queen of the beach format which means you don't come with a partner you play with a new partner each time and keep track of your own wins tyson germain teaming up to do some damage early on here germain gets a nice set from tice but hits it just long Micronesian Games are coming up in June, and the NMI planning to send both a men's and women's team. Those games held in the Marshall Islands. Team NMI won a bronze medal in the Pacific Games after a tough loss to Australia. Those games held in the Solomon Islands. And a silver medal in the mini games that were last held in Saipan. Volleyball action continues this weekend. Golfers come north and practice your game at the Marianas Driving Range. New Year's local specials. 10-piece coupon books available for just $60. That's a $10 savings. Want to get really good? Come work on your swing every day for just $99 per month. It's our practice pass and you're going to love it. Grab your passes and go straight to the range. You can social distance and chip all at the same time and the views are free. Reserve now at MarianasTrekking.com. You can pay online. Open seven days a week. For your KSBN weather report, tonight and Tuesday, breezy, partly cloudy with isolated showers, east winds 15 to 25 miles per hour, low 77, highs 87, and your chance of showers is at 20%. For your marine forecast, moderate to fresh trade winds and combined seas of 6 to 9 feet are expected the next few days. A slow moving disturbance far to our southeast may bring some showers for the latter half of this week. High tide will be at 6.53 a.m., followed by a low tide at 1.39 p.m. Sunrise will be at 6.07 a.m., and the sunset, you can catch that tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. <laughs> 